good evening good evening one and all hi students good evening today we are going to discuss a topic which is going to be very interesting and i think it is the topic for the day and need of the hour also it is nothing else the human health and disease so shall we start with this topic so the first is you have to understand that health is a resource of everyday life is something you have to know that it is a state of normal function that could be disrupted from time to time because of diseases so in today's topic we have to know that what are all the topics that we are going to cover in the entire chapter of human health and disease it is the introduction to what you mean by health disease the classification of disease so that we are going to see today then we are going to see about what are the common disease and the common disease causing agents and about what is this cancer aids the vaccination the drugs and the alcohol abuse now coming for the concept what is the health i already told you that our human body is maintained by a concept of homeostasis it is nothing but the maintenance of static internal environment within the physiological limits all the systems of the body integrate and do maintain this homeostasis so you have to know another concept that a uh, health is nothing but which is characterized by anatomic physiologic and psychologic integrity and the ability that it going to give an individual where he can do his own work where he becomes himself personally satisfied and at the same time he can also do a valuable family work work which meant not only at the family even at the occupation that is at its own work site and he is going to be a person contributing more to the society so health is something that you should know that it is the ability to maintain the homeostasis so if there is going to be any disruption in the maintenance of homeostasis then it is going to result in the pathology what we call the disease so the basic concept like all our human bodies are functioning normally it is the mechanism that is because of homeostasis where all the systems are integrated and all are going to work in an unison but suppose if there is going to be a dysfunction or there is a non integration between the system then what happens it is going to result in the pathology which we call that the person develops a disease you have seen this the world health day we would have seen in the newspapers even our schools or in the colleges they do celebrate the world health day it is celebrated on april 7th what is about this world health day now you have to understand that every human when you see he has got a right to have the health irrespective of the race the nation color language etc every individual has a right to health so there are still countries where such health awareness are not been reached in spite of bursting technological advancement so what is going to happen the who has thought that okay let us create an awareness about the health the various health awareness topics to the public so they announced what is called the world health day it was announced in 1950 April 7th is celebrated as the World Health Day. Even in spite of various technological advancements, some of the countries they were not able to fulfill 
the health awareness among the people residing in their own nations. Now look at this pandemic, the WHO is really working too hard to find what could be the solution that we could offer or render to prevent or to fight against this pandemic COVID-19. So that is the WHO role and they are bringing to bring an awareness among the people such World Health Day is being organized. Now we will see about what is the definition of health. When you ask somebody hi, how are you? Oh, I am fine. Which meant to say that we are physically, mentally and socially we are fine. In contest of a physician, in contest of a biologist, we mean to say that the person is healthy. So health is defined as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. So you can see that the health, okay, so health is defined as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. What do you understand by this statement? A person, not only that he has, is free from physical alignment like pain or he is having some other issues. Nothing like that. He is fit and the mind should be sound. So he is having a sound body, there is a sound mind. And apart from that, he has to know the sociability, which we mean he is able to interact with everybody. So that is what we called as the person to be healthy. Now this definition was actually proposed by the WHO and later there were many modifications they brought about. Like in terms like they try to say that it is something that the individual should be able to grow and they have to realize like what are their aspiration and at the same time satisfy the needs to cope up or to resist with the change whatever. So a person when we say healthy this is the WHO has given this definition but how to understand this concept I already said our body is working in an unison. That is, all the systems integrate and they are going to bring about that homeostasis. So, there is something, the health when you say, there is an ability to maintain that homeostasis. So, that we call it as health. Why a person should be healthy? A person should be healthy because he should have to make himself more productive. As a student, you say why you need to be healthy? Yes, definitely of your age group, you have to be more healthy because you have to put lot of your effort in your education, your personal needs, etc. So this input is going to increase your productivity and at the same time, you are going to increase your longevity. So that is why healthy people, they have more potential where they can put input in form of concentration. Yes. And they can increase the productivity. Productivity like the efficiency that is being done either at the workplace or the family and they are going to have longer life because they don't develop any disease. So that is what the healthy people do have. Now how can we achieve this? So when I, somebody says like you are healthy, hey look at that person, he is very healthy and how is that? Some people are healthy and some people do not have that healthiness. Probably we say there is a triad. There is a triad where it is going to bring about the healthiness. A balanced diet, a personal hygiene and the physical exercise. What do you mean by balanced diet? When I say balanced diet, it means that you are going to include in your three meals a proper correct proportion of starch okay fibers and five portions of those fruits and vegetables that is going to supplement you with the protein the vitamins and minerals so a balanced diet is very important to become ourselves healthier then the personal hygiene now when you switch on the radios the tvs 
or anywhere you look they are more emphasizing on the hygiene frequently washing the hands yes and they ask us to sanitize it as you go touch the door knob or when you sneeze use a hanky maintain the distance these are all also what a sort of hygiene that we need to maintain to avoid ourselves from getting infected with covid 19 so this is with the current scenario but what is a personal hygiene like in terms of washing hands or in terms like using hanky or you're taking a bath daily cutting the nails making yourself look clean okay all that is where we talk about the grooming the personal hygiene do come physical exercise sedentary lifestyle is something which is going to push you to the development of diseases so exercises in the form of yoga or it can be like aerobic exercises all these are the prerequisites which is needed to maintain a good health so when you say something healthy you should have these three triad to be filled and that is how you are going to have a healthier and a longer peaceful life so that is very important so apart from uh, this you have to know another thing the other end of the spectrum when you say somebody healthy they have a sound mind a sound body they have a good interaction and they are having a very good participation in the society among its own members of the society but there is something which we say the disease what do you mean by disease when the functioning of one or more organs or systems of the body is adversely affected characterized by various signs and symptoms we say that we are not healthy that is we have a disease simply to put in let me put it in a nutshell when there is a imbalance or there is a dysfunction of your homeostasis it results in a disease i said there are 12 systems which is all coping up with each other bringing about the maintenance of homeostasis the internal environment which i'm talking to you all about is nothing but the extracellular fluid which is the internal environment your cells the trillion cells are constantly bathed with this fluid the ph the glucose okay and all the parameters like sodium temperature chloride etc etc all have to be maintained within the normal limit for this maintaining within that normal limit all the systems do integrate and maintain that homeostasis to maintain that homeostasis your systems are functioning the balanced diet the personal hygiene the physical exercise all do give a hand push the system and bring an harmony in maintaining the homeostasis suppose if there is a disruption what do happen definitely there is going to be an imbalance a disturbance in the maintenance of homeostasis and the person develops disease i'll give you one small example what is a normal body temperature 98.4 degree fahrenheit yes we all know this now for this to maintain okay for this to maintain we need the operating of the systems like the nervous system the integumentary system the circulatory system all do maintain to maintain this body temperature but when there is a disease there is a disruption and what happens it results in disturbance of homeostasis the person develops a disease and as a sequel he develops fever pyrexia so this is what is the development of disease okay so when there is something getting disturbed like when the functioning of one or more organs they get disturbed so immediately they come with various signs and symptoms what do you mean by signs and symptoms symptoms are something which the patient tells to the physician like for example i have a headache i have a nose block 
I have difficulty in breathing. These are the symptoms what I communicate to the physician. But what are the signs? Signs are what the physician, me, going to find myself by doing certain tests, looking into the report and concluding. So symptoms, signs. So we call that signs and symptoms, which is characteristic of every disease. Now we have health, which I already said it's something, a state of sound mind, sound body, that what we emphasize on health. But how health is affected? How health is affected? Probably by genetic disorders. The genetic disorders are nothing but which we get inherited right from our parents. It's not only like it runs in families, so it gets inherited through mother gene. So it is the defect right present from my parents to the offspring. We can give a good example of genetic disorders like hemophilia, which is a bleeding disorder which runs in families, right? And it runs in families. And another important thing that you need to know in genetic disorders, like it is passed through your gene, okay? So that is how they get inherited and it runs in families. The classical example is hemophilia. It's a bleeding disorder. What about sickle cell anemia? Again, it is a genetic disorder. So there is some mutation that is happening and that is bringing about a change in the various gene and that gets inherited and it is getting passed on like cancer, some familial cancer. They are all genetic disorders. Next is infections. What about the infections? They are caused by the microorganisms which we classically call them pathogens. So they are going to cause the infections. Like what about this COVID? Yes, viral infection. What about the TB? A bacterial infection. So these infections are organisms. Okay. So they just cause the disease. Okay. So that is one way our health is getting affected. What about the lifestyle? The food habits, the cleanliness, the exercise, all that also reflect on the person health. How does it affect? For example, if I am going to take too much of fat, fat containing high calorie, in a person of more than 40-50 years, he is pushing himself, predisposing himself for developing high cholesterol level, where he has more chances to develop coronary artery disease. Same way like exercise, when you have a very sedentary lifestyle, what happens? It pushes you to the development of diabetes mellitus. Suppose some people, they don't get time at all. They rest, no rest. They keep working. They get exhausted. Land up with certain anxiety disorders. So these are some of the lifestyle modifications. Suppose if they are not going to maintain the personal hygiene. Okay, so what happens? Like lifestyle in case of having sexual intercourse with multisexual partners or drug addiction, lifestyle. So there they are going to contract with certain diseases. So the health, the term is getting affected. So these are the possible thing where the genetic disorders, the infections and certain lifestyle are going to affect the individual and thereby the health is affected and he is going to get contracted with the disease. And how are you going to make a individual say that you are going to suffer from the disease? So what we call the awareness about the disease and their effect on different bodily functions, the vaccination which we call the immunization protocol against the infectious disease, proper disposal of waste, control of vectors, maintenance of hygienic food and water resources, all are very essential to achieve good health. For example, if you say awareness, 
like in the form of camps where the NGOs and the governments are organizing, they are bringing about awareness. Say for example, even in the COVID, what they are trying to do? They are putting in medias, they are putting camps and they are trying to say about bringing awareness about the seriousness of this COVID-19. So that awareness about any disease, the various effect on the system which is affected. So how are we going to prevent? So the WHO and the various governments are looking for some vaccination. The vaccination is the one which can prevent us from developing these infectious disease. And at the same time, we have to know the proper disposal of waste. Suppose if the waste are getting dumped up, there is chances of these mosquitoes and so there is more chance of getting dengue, malaria. So that proper disposal of waste should be taken care. Control of vectors, like we are going to educate the people how you have to control the vectors, like particularly those mosquitoes, don't stagnate water, keep the doors closed, use uh, uh, what you call those repellents, all these we educate the people and at the same time maintenance of hygienic food, so cleanliness, eating the right food, proper washing of fruits, vegetables, what you consume, having a good hygienic food good water because there are waterborne disease also like typhoid cholera so you have to take clean pure water okay so all that has to be taken care for achieving the good health so every state has the own health team and they are responsible for making this awareness among the individuals who are residing in the particular place so there are some important acronyms which you must know before we enter into this subject of human health. So look here we have MHC okay so I hope you know what are acronyms so MHC major histocompatibility complex. So these are some polymorphic gene okay which will be present on the surface of the WBC something it is going to do with transplantation. So when I teach you with that immunity chapter, we will be using this term of MHC very closely linked with that transplantation of tissues. Then we have APC antigen presenting cell. It is something that it is going to present the substance to the lymphocytes like it presents the antigen to the acquired immune system like we have the macrophages the dendritic cells so they are the one which we call the antigen presenting cell see they are nothing but like we have the one minute so we have what are called the Langerhans cells okay the macrophages so these are some of the antigen presenting cells that we sh you should know okay so they are uh, some of the uh, what you call the uh, cells that present the antigen to the lymphocytes. Then we have the HLA human leukocyte antigen. So they are somewhere linked with this MHC something we are going to see in the transplantation of tissues. Then we have LSD lysergic acid diethylamide when we deal with the drug abuse there I will be talking about this LSD. Then we have the DHF, Dengue Hemorrhagic Fever, okay. Then we have DPT, in vaccination protocol I will be talking about diphtheria, tetanus, petrusis. Then we have CJD, Cruzfeld Jacob disease, which is a disease caused by the pyron, which I will be explaining in the forthcoming slides. What is STD, sexually transmitted disease. Then we have HIV, I hope you all know. The human immunodeficiency virus which is going to cause AIDS. WHO means World Health Organization. CGHS, the Central Government Health Scheme. So these are some of the important acronym which we will be coming across in the chapter. Now coming on for the classification of the disease, you have to understand that how the disease are classified. I said already when there is a disturbance 
in the homeostasis it results in the pathology when your physiology going wrong it results in pathology and hence the person develops the disease so how are we going to classify the disease it can be classified as communicable non communicable or it can be classified like congenital acquired or it can be like heritable non heritable so we have such classification to avoid we will form a uniform pattern so you know what is disease a person who is having a disturbance in the homeostasis so one or two system not functioning resulting in a disease the disease is classified as congenital or acquired disease what do you mean by congenital disease congenital disease means the disease that is present right from birth okay so from birth the person is having for example congenital heart disease yes or it can be like genetic disorders like we saw hemophilia sickle cell anemia because these disorders are inherited right from the parent and that is how we call them as congenital disease even we say transplantal that is from the mother to the fetus like say aids or even some viral infections like that they might pass from the mother to the child so that all will be grouped under congenital diseases what about acquired disease this disease is going to develop after birth like when you get exposure to certain organism or when you get exposure yourself to certain environment that is how it's pushing the individual to develop the disease which we call it as acquired disease now the congenital disease can be in genetic disorders it can be because of a single gene mutation or it can be because of chromosomal aberrations what is single gene mutation like albinism hemophilia color blindness like hemophilia is a bleeding disorder i hope you would have studied in your 11th portion it is actually due to the deficiency of factor 8 okay so the person when he gets a, even a trivial injury he will bleed to the core okay there will be profuse bleeding because the bleeding that mechanism of coagulation do not happen in a proper way so that is why we call that as hemophilia so hemophilia is due to the deficiency of factor 8 color blindness like we have cones in the retina which is responsible for the color vision so congenital absence of that cones will result in the blindness it's not like total blindness they will not be able to appreciate certain colors so that is because of one single mutation happening but what about chromosomal aberrations like we have certain deletions duplication or inversion of one we call it as frame shift mutation one complete pair of that is getting deleted so that results in turner syndrome klinefelter syndrome so that are the chromosomal aberrations like in klinefelter syndrome what happens instead of xy there is going to be another x so 47 plus xxy so like that in turner syndrome that one x will be absent so which will be xo 45 plus xo so like that it will be there then we have acquired disease which is communicable and non communicable what do you mean by communicable yes now what is with covid 19 yes it is communicable like easily it get transplant transmitted from one person to an other person by direct contact that we call it as communicable what is non communicable they are non infectious and they are going to be transmitted probably by some vectors or it can be because of some food water etc so such we call them as non communicable diseases so there is some disturbance which is happening in the bodily system due to aging some degenerative change or there is some hypo or hyper secretion of hormones so they are not going to be communicable but rather they are non infectious diseases now under communicable we have infectious depending on the mode of transmission what do you mean by mode of transmission transmission means how they are going to spread so the spread can be either a contagious disease or a non contagious disease what is contagious disease the spread through direct contact okay example like tuberculosis 
COVID-19, they are all very contagious. What about non-contagious? They are totally different. Like they are going to spread through the vector and at the same time they are non-contagious, not spread through the direct contact. So like malaria and all. Now coming to the non-communicable disorder, they are again classified as degenerative disease. What is degenerative disease? That is if any of the organ okay, or any tissue, there is some malfunction. Like they are not able to do their work properly because of the aging. What happens? The joints, they get the surfaces get eroded or say in cases like the neurons. What is happening as in aging process? there is going to be degeneration. So these degenerative process brings about certain diseases like coronary artery disease or Alzheimer's disease or osteoarthritis. So these are called the degenerative diseases. What about the deficiency disease? You are not taking the vitamins or minerals what is needed according to the daily requirement. So that is why they develop the deficiency say beriberi or night blindness. Allergy, it is exaggerated immune response to some particular substance. So like hay fever, atric area like that. Even asthma we say under allergy. Cancer, there is an abnormal growth of certain cells. So there is excessive proliferation of cells. So it is the tumor, an undifferentiated mass of cell which can be either benign or malignant depending on that and we have the mental disorders because of some addiction or because of some drug abuse they do develop hallucination delusion so these are the mental disorders and then the hormonal disorders which is because of certain hormones some hormones if they are more secreted say growth hormone jejantism what happens if suppose insulin is not produced diabetes so these are all non-communicable disease which is not going to spread from one person to another person like a degenerative disease or a vitamin deficiency a allergy cancer they don't spread but what about a communicable disease they spread from one person to one other person so disease can be grouped into congenital and acquired disease so what is congenital which I already told you it means contracted at birth like hereditary disease like hemophilia sickle cell anemia what happens in hemophilia the clotting factor 8 is absent the anti hemophilic factor which is very much needed for the clot formation so that is why they develop the disease sickle cell anemia what happens in sickle cell anemia in the polypeptide chain what is happening in the sixth position, the glutamic acid is replaced by valin. It is a single point gene mutation. So there it is a hereditary disease which is running in families. It can also be transplantal which means example right from the mother passing to the fetus. Like we have measles, syphilis. The hemolytic disorder of the newborn, erythroblastosis fetalis. So what is erythroblastosis fetalis? I hope you have heard of this condition. Erythroblastosis fetalis, which is nothing but the hemolytic disease of the newborn. Mother is Rh negative, the father is Rh positive, the baby is Rh positive. So what happens? The RBCs will just enter into the maternal blood during the delivery. The first child will escape and in the subsequent uh, pregnancy, the antibodies are already formed as memory cell and they are going to attack the fetus. So resulting in severe destruction of RBC, there is going to be jaundice. That is what hemolytic disease of the newborn. Then we have the acquired diseases. The acquired disease are going to be there preferably after the birth like for example due to infection like say for example the tuberculosis common cold okay or it can be degeneration like in terms of Alzheimer's disease or it can be osteoarthritis say there is degeneration of the tissues addiction 
deficiency like we have the vitamin A or K deficiency or it can be malfunctioning of certain organs or tissues of the body. So this is how the disease are acquired. So congenital and acquired. The acquired disease are again broadly divided into infectious and non-infectious. When I say infectious disease again we are going to again make it understand that we are going to again classify that as either they are going to be communicable or non-communicable. What you mean by communicable? Easily getting transmitted from one person to another. What is happening with this COVID-19? Like one person in a family gets everybody, the entire place is getting affected. Such a highly communicable risk is there. But what about non-infectious or non-communicable? Say in a family if somebody is having diabetes mellitus, you think that it will spread to another? No, because it is because of some hyposecretion of a hormone. So naturally it will not transmit from one person to another. So it is a non-communicable disease. So infectious disease can be either contagious or non-contagious. What do you mean by contagious? Like simple by direct contact you get. So in COVID-19 we are saying no, just when you sneeze or when you cough, so the distance immediately transmitted from one person to another person. Same way chicken pox. That is why in school if one child gets, we will not ask the others. So we will quarantine. What we do? We will not say, we will give medical leave and the child will take that leaves because easily the entire crowd will develop the chicken pox. So there are contagious disease. Even common cold, one gets in the class, the entire class will have the running nose with common. So they are all highly contagious. What about non-contagious? For non-contagious, you require an agent. It is not like contagious where it is a direct contact. Here you require an agent. What is that agent? It is a vector or it can be a contaminated food or a water. So what happens to that? The person acquires the disease. So for example in malaria, what happens there in malaria? The person develops malaria because of the mosquito bite, the anilove mosquito. Because the anilove mosquito will carry the parasite, the plasmodium, Vivax. So this is the parasite which is in, residing inside the mosquito and that mosquito bite leads to malaria. So it is purely because of what? A vector. Vectors are also again classified which I will come in the forthcoming slides. Okay. So the non-infectious disease can again be classified as degenerative disease, deficiency which I told you like scurvy because of vitamin C vitamin A, night blindness, etc. And allergy, asthma, you are allergic to some substance. Okay. And abnormal tissue growth like cancer or there is hypo hyper secretion of hormones, insulin deficiency, diabetes mellitus, cortisol excess, Cushing syndrome. Okay. Excess of thyroid hormone secretion, hyperthyroidism, decrease in the thyroid hormone secretion, mexedema, goiter. Okay, so that are all classified under the non-infectious diseases. Okay, how the disease are transmitted? So next comes, okay, I accept. Ma'am, you are saying the disease are transmitted, but how do they transmit from one person to another person? So how, what they are saying in COVID, like they are saying sanitize your hand. They are asking us to sanitize those doorknobs. Yes, the place, whatever is it. Why we do all that? Because they directly spread. So in this transmission of disease, that is the direct spread, it can be because of hanky, doorknobs, the lift buttons. So where all possibility, the gate, door, everything. So wherever the person with that infection touches, it is going to, if another person touches, by direct contact, he is going to get that. So probably by droplets, where one sneeze or cough. So suppose, for example, if somebody sneezes. So they are going to have those particles and they are going to touch that. If another person comes and touch the same thing, he is going to contract that disease. So contact transmission from one person to another by direct contact. But what about vehicle transmission? The vehicle is actually, it is like a carrier. Okay, it's not 
uh, a carrier which we, we say it is non-living and it is going to spread the infection. For example, say water. In water, what can happen? The Salamona typhi can be there. So, through the water, when you drink that water which is contaminated, you might get typhoid. And at the same time, the food, the food is spoiled. Okay. So, you are going to eat the spoiled food, which not knowingly, some way is food poisoning. What happens there? Again, you are going to land up with the condition botulinism. So, this is how, what we mean by the vehicle transmission. It is non-living, but it is going to silently enter your body through these agents like water, air, food. Then we have the vector transmission. So, what is a vector? The vector is something that it is going to transmit the disease to the humans. Okay. So, probably those mosquitoes, ticks, lice, fleas, okay, those arthropods, they are all vectors. So, vectors can be either mechanical vector or a biological vector. What are mechanical vectors? These vectors, they don't complete their development before they are entering into the host. They don't have that. But what about in biological vectors? They have what is called a development. Half the life cycle they finish in the what happens? Suppose you take a parasite. They have a life cycle in that vector and simultaneously they have a other half cycle in the host. Yes. So, such things are called the biological vectors where the pathogens are very active. But in mechanical vectors, you do not have such development process, rather they enter very passively into the host. For example, we say that swimmers itch, where silently that particular organism will slowly enter into the bruise of that uh, person by making a nick on the skin and it will enter into the body parts. So that is mechanical vectors. Biological vectors, they are going to enter into and actively into the body like malaria and all, dengue and all. Now we are going to see about the array of agents that cause the disease. What are the array of organisms, the microorganisms and there are other pathogens. So collectively, whatever the organism that causes the disease, we call them as pathogens. That is why the study of these pathogens, the consequences, the sequel changes, what happens in the body tissues are collectively studied by the subject called pathology. Okay. So, we have a wide range of organism which belongs to bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoans, helminth, etc. So, before going into this, the disease which are caused by the microorganism, we have to remember a pioneer in this field whom we call the Robert Koch. The Robert Koch is a person like he is a, a German microbiologist. So, he was the one who made a vast study under the infectious disease. So, he was the first to identify and study about the communicable diseases. So, disease are mostly caused by microorganisms and we have to understand that he made a postulation which we call it as Koch postulation which we call it as Coase postulates, okay, which was meant by Robert Koch. So, he said that, see, if there is a disease, probably it could be because of microorganism. Second point, he said that the organisms, whatever causing the disease, they can be isolated, cultured in a medium, okay. And then he said that the inoculation of that culture into another organism will bring about the same disease. So, these were some of the Koch postulation. But what was the thing? Like many of the virus will not probably fit into these postulation. So, that is what we have to know. Then we have what is the disease that cause, uh, disease causing agents which I would like to tell you. So, we have what is the bacteria. So, coming on for uh, bacteria. Before that, uh, you have to know that bacteria, they are prokaryotes, right? And uh, these bacteria, they don't have uh, uh, what you call, they might have a cell wall, but they don't have the organelles like mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, lysozymes and all that. So, the bacteria is one like uh, 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 what you call the organisms 
which is going to produce a disease okay but there are good bacteria also the bacteria that is residing in our intestinal flora is producing the vitamin k yes and the most of the vitamin b complex vitamins but what about the bacteria uh, that is uh, uh, there which are harmful so the bacteria there are good bacteria and certain harm bacteria that are harmful also so bacteria is something like it will produce uh, bacteria example like we have uh, what you call the streptococcus so we'll do in the forthcoming classes streptococcus staphylococcus they are all actually bacteria clostridium tetani is also a bacteria but they release toxin see bacteria will release some substances they are toxin they can be either endotoxin or exotoxin like they bring about the symptoms what we get is probably because of the toxins released by the bacteria okay so next we have the virus virus when you say you know the best thing i can tell you is suppose you imagine uh, some terrorist is entering an area and he is taking the control of that entire area and uh, because of the fear of life we obey the terrorist something like that same way virus it will have its own viral genome which will have the nucleic acid with a protein cap and it will just enter into a bacteria we call that as the bacteriophage so what do we call that one minute we call that as the bacteriophage okay the virus infecting the bacteria and what happens slowly it will insert its uh, the nuclear material into it it will dictate it and hence all the bacteriophage will carry the material of it so this is why the virus is so dangerous okay so then we have uh, what we call the fungi okay so we have uh, the fungi uh, excuse me power switch off net so next we have what is the fungi so in fungi when we uh, talk about we have to know about these fungus they are mostly uh, they are eukaryotic they are heterotrophic they are very quiet they live in very damp wet places and uh, they mostly see you can see them on those dead organic matter and all so fungal are something which bring about infections of the skin hair nail and all so that is regarding with fungi coming on for protozoa those amoeba paramecium which you have studied so under protozoa like we can see the malarial infection all the filarial infections so they are all because of what the protozoa so the protozoal infections like uh, entamoeba histolytica or the malaria which we will be seeing in our forthcoming classes even the elephantiasis they are all protozoal infections so they are also what those protozoa they are also heterotrophic and eukaryotic organisms then we have these helminthes okay so see the helminthes i hope you all know those worms either tapeworms round worm flat worm so these organisms they slowly infest inside our body and they go they'll be having a parasitic effect what do you mean by parasitic effect like one will be benefited and the host will be having the detrimental effect so this is where with the helminthes so what they are going to do they will take all the nutrients from us and definitely the person who is having the helminthic infection will suffer from the adverse effects okay like tapeworm manifestation mostly we come across in children particularly school going children mostly they will have the tummy pain loss of weight okay and they will have all that uh, change in the nail and uh, chiliosis in the lips and all so the pediatrician will identify and give them the particular dose then we have what are called the rickettsia the rickettsia is nothing but intracellular parasites where it cannot reproduce without a host like we have certain conditions like q fever rickettsia uh, syndrome like that they are all because of rickettsia then we have chlamydia chlamydia means what they are obligate intracellular parasite okay but there is a confusion still among many of the biologists whether it is a virus or a bacteria because it do have a cell wall and at the same time it has both rna and dna genetic material so the chlamydia very common that brings about that uh, sexually transmitted disease the chlamydia then we have the mycoplasma which is uh, supposed to be that pplo which you would have studied in your 11th standard that is the pleuro pneumonia like organism 
this mycoplasma like they are very smallest organism okay it will have a rigid cell wall and it will have a mycelium like uh, structures and all but it is going to bring about symptoms like pneumonia okay and last it is the pyrions they are actually infectious proteins now these pyrions when they slowly enter mostly your brain probably they change or unfold the proteins which is present anywhere so that is how these pyrions are responsible to bring about the cjd crucifel jacob disease which we saw it is a pyrion infectious they bring about various degenerative disorders insomnia familial insomnia they are all because of pyrions so students again i am telling you we saw today what is health okay then i taught you what you mean by disease and we saw what are the classification of disease and at the same time what is congenital acquired then i taught you when i say acquired what do you mean by communicable non communicable when i say communicable what is contagious through direct contact when i say non contagious it is through a vector bond or through any way like a vehicle transmission so that you have to understand then i taught you what is non communicable like diabetes mellitus or it can be like because of some degenerative disorder allergy all these are all what non communicable then what are the agents that bring about diseases bacteria virus fungi protozoa helminthes rickettsia chlamydia mycoplasma and pyrions so these array of organisms that produce disease in the man we call them as pathogens so henceforth if i use the word pathogen i am including all these organisms which is causing the diseases so look at here so the bacteria they are prokaryotic organism okay and uh, you have to know these bacteria are the one which is maybe good sometime like colonizing the colon producing the vitamin k and b complex sometimes they are very harmful bringing about disease like i'm sorry bringing about disease like tuberculosis bringing about uh, disease like tuberculosis okay or cholera etc what about the fungal which i said the fungal infections mainly that affect the skin hair nails and all then protozoa we saw the malaria filarial infections they are all because of the protozoa then certain algae is also they do produce the diseases see this one which i wanted to show you all so what you are seeing is the chlamydial infection okay mainly because of the chlamydias uh, it will affect the genital area also and at the same time the oral part also so it is one of the sexually transmitted disease okay chlamydia trachomatis which we will see see this is the helminthes which i wanted to show you see this is that worms usually they used to have lot of worms so uh, the larva everything will be there so it will slowly develop and it will be residing inside the host so this is the helminthes okay the worm the tapeworm then the viral which i wanted to show you the covid what it is doing it is bring it is just entering bringing about pneumonia like symptoms right the breathlessness and other thing so viral infection which i just wanted to show you and say i'm sorry the covid or aids all these are all what due to viral infection yes what about mycoplasma i said it is going to bring about pneumonia pneumonia like symptoms so that is with mycoplasma okay so mycoplasma more characteristic to produce pneumonia okay so we will just revise with some questions okay students infectious proteins are present in bacteria pyrions viroids satellite virus now what would be the answer the answer is pyrions why because pyrions are infectious agents which are made up of proteins without nucleic acid so the pyrions are the one which i already said they are the responsible for development of crucifel jacob disease okay so these pyrions what they do they go and unfold and fold certain proteins in the brain and they bring about certain changes and result in the development of this disease so they are pyrions which of the following is a communicable disease tb diabetes mellitus 
peptic ulcer hypertension okay now we will see which is a communicable disease here we will see the answer it is tb the tb is communicable because where all others are what non communicable what about tb it is caused by the bacterial infection mycobacterium tuberculae it's a bacilli mycobacterium tuberculae it's a bacilli infection okay and what is uh, with the diabetes the diabetes is because of what decrease in insulin secretion what is hypertension it is because of increase in the blood pressure and peptic ulcer what is happening there is increase in the acid and the pepsin secretion so these all will come under the non communicable whereas the tuberculosis is purely because of a bacterial infection that is why we say it is communicable and they are also contagious which is a vector borne disease what do you mean by vector which is i taught you about vector vector it, it is a agent that is going to help in transmission of disease they are biological they are living organism so that vector when i say it can be either a biological vector or a mechanical vector right so in biological vector here you see tb it's a bacterial infection that is how you have to say typhoid again it is also a infection again this is also a bacterial infection what is left out the malaria now we'll see the answer malaria why malaria because malaria is caused by plasmodium vivax it's a parasite plasmodium vivax so this parasite it spreads to the human through the bite of infected mosquitoes particularly those female anilofs mosquitoes so that is also they are going to act like vector so that is why we say malaria as a vector borne disease so i would like to summarize it students so in today's class we saw what is health okay so it is a state of physical mental and social well being when there is going to be a disruption in the health there is going to be a development of disease where a person is going to represent it with a signs and symptoms okay so the disease the disease the disease are going to be classified as communicable and non communicable so what do you mean by the disease like you can classify as communicable or non communicable congenital or acquired heritable and non heritable so here i brought you a classification as congenital acquired what is congenital present right from birth like it can be genetic disorder or it can be like a, a transplacental from mother to fetus or you can say it is because of purely genetic reasons okay so that is congenital from birth but what about acquired like acquired after birth they are getting acquired or contracted with the environment they do develop infection so that is what we call it as acquired disease so acquired disease can be again further classified or again divided into what i say by communicable and non communicable when i say communicable disease that means it is spreading from one person to another person it can be contagious by direct contact or non contagious where it requires a vector a vehicle like that but when i say non communicable disease probably they are not going to spread from one person to another person and it results because of some degenerative changes or there is uh, some allergic or there is uh, probably uh, because of uh, hormonal imbalances so that brings about this diseases so like a non communicable diabetes mellitus allergic reaction osteoarthritis okay so these are all are what non communicable but when i say communicable under contagious tuberculosis very contagious covid very contagious so they are all put under that chicken pox contagious but what about non contagious which is spreading through an agent which can be a vector which can be uh, through a vehicle like that so example like we have what is uh, say for example like malaria and all they are non contagious so you have to know the entire scenario like how do we classify so the disease are again they are classified by a group of microorganisms which we call them the organisms which produce the disease as pathogens so what are the pathogens we saw the bacteria virus fungal rickettsia chlamydia uh, chlamydias and pyrions also the pyrions are infectious proteins okay which is going to bring about a change 
in the body like particularly the cell where they do go they bring about the folding and unfolding of those proteins and result in the characteristic uh, degenerative changes in the particular tissue that CJD is one of the best example. So this is how we saw about the health, the disease, the classification and what are the pathogens that cause the disease. So with this I conclude my session. Thank you students. Thank you students.